Why did God turn King Nebuchadnezzar into an animal? Babylonian Empire. At the same hour, the word about Nebuchadnezzar was fulfilled, and he was driven out from among men. He ate grass like oxen, and his body was wet with the dew of heaven, until his hair grew like eagles' feathers, and his nails like those of birds. Welcome, my dear listener. Do you want to know how, when, where, and why did Nebuchadnezzar become a wild animal? Very good. Open your Bible, get comfortable, and let's watch together the madness of Nebuchadnezzar. Before delving into this topic, don't forget to subscribe to our channel and activate the notification bell so that YouTube notifies you every time we publish a new video. Let's get started. Nebuchadnezzar II was king of Babylon, under whose reign the Neo-Babylonian Empire knew its maximum splendor before being annexed to the Persian Empire. Nebuchadnezzar is especially remembered as a great restorer and builder of temples and public buildings, such as the Hanging Gardens of Babylon, one of the seven wonders of the ancient world, and a ziggurat that has been identified by some as the biblical Tower of Babel in Iraq. Nebuchadnezzar is considered one of the best kings in its history. Nebuchadnezzar was the son of the Chaldean general Nabopolassar, who proclaimed himself sovereign of Palestine, Syria, Mesopotamia, and Elam after the fall of Ashurbanipal. In this way, a new empire was established on the remains of the then-dying Assyrian Empire. Nebuchadnezzar managed to secure control of these latitudes by defeating the Egyptians in the Battle of Carchemish in the year 605 BC. After the death of his father during that same year, he ascended the throne with the intention of continuing the conquests undertaken by Nabopolassar. One of Nebuchadnezzar's decisive conquests was Jerusalem. God used Babylon as his agent of judgment against Israel for their sins of idolatry and rebellion against him. In fact, there were several times during this period, 607-586 BC, when the Jews were taken captive by Babylon. With each of the successive rebellions against the Babylonian Empire, Nebuchadnezzar would lead his armies against Judah until they besieged Jerusalem for over a year, killing many people and destroying the Jewish temple. They took thousands of Jews captive, leaving Jerusalem in ruins. During these deportations of the Jewish people, Daniel would also be taken captive to Babylon. In Babylon, God would honor him greatly. In chapter 2 of Daniel, we see that the prophet, after interpreting a dream that King Nebuchadnezzar had, magnified him. He gave him many honors and great gifts, making him governor of the entire province of Babylon and the supreme leader of all the wise men of Babylon. Now, sometime later, King Nebuchadnezzar had another dream. Like the first dream, no wise man of Babylon could give its interpretation. However, there was someone who could give him the interpretation, and that was Daniel. Let's read Daniel 4. Nebuchadnezzar, king to all the peoples, nations, and languages that dwell in all the earth. Peace be multiplied to you. It is fitting that I declare the signs and miracles that the Most High God has done for me. How great are his signs, and how powerful are his wonders. His kingdom is an everlasting kingdom, and his dominion from generation to generation. According to scholars, the time elapsed between chapter 3 and 4 is approximately 30 years. In that case, Daniel would be approximately 50 years old, and Nebuchadnezzar would be an older man. The king would be at the age in which a person looks back to analyze what he has done with his life. On the other hand, we know that Daniel is the author of the book we are studying. However, in chapter 4, we meet another surprising interlocutor. The words come directly from Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon. 
and his words were transcribed by Daniel in his book, the message is addressed to everyone. What is the message that the most powerful king in history wants to convey at the end of his life? It is fitting that I declare the signs and miracles that the Most High God has done for me. How great are his signs and how powerful are his wonders. His kingdom is an everlasting kingdom and his dominion from generation to generation. What happened in Nebuchadnezzar's life was so important that he himself wanted to bear witness to it, to all the peoples, nations, and languages that dwell in all the earth. He did so through an imperial edict that would initially circulate widely throughout his kingdom. Later, the Holy Spirit led Daniel to include it as an inspired part of the Holy Scriptures. We assume that Daniel incorporated the writing of a pagan king because it served to give glory to God, but also because he knew that the change produced in the king was authentic and beyond all doubt. Nebuchadnezzar's desire to bear witness to the God of heaven, whom he had finally come to know personally, is admirable. He does it with all the means at his disposal. How much we have to imitate this desire. Now, with this, there are three recognitions that Nebuchadnezzar makes of Jehovah God and has done for us. Satan has a great interest in keeping us in an unnatural silence about the signs and miracles that the Most High God has done for us. If we see in the sacred scriptures and also in the history books, we find that Nebuchadnezzar was a great king in Iraq. He is considered one of the best kings in its history. But in this chapter, he recognized that the kingdom of God was even greater and that his dominion was completely unique because it was an everlasting kingdom. But before the test, Nebuchadnezzar's rest was the false rest of the wicked. God soon shook him out of his false security. Note that Nebuchadnezzar was tranquil and flourishing. In other words, he was in a time of peace and prosperity. This was a period in his life when he had already conquered numerous nations and had carried out an immense construction of Babylon, as numerous archaeological remains attest. A test, we could say, that it was a well-deserved time of peace and prosperity after the great efforts made in these circumstances. Ought, this is the appearance of men without grace. They do not run to God until other refugees fail them. And as we see once again, faced with the failure of his sorcerers, this pagan and polytheist king had to recognize that he needed the help of Jehovah, the God of the Jews. That being said, next, we will read the details of the dream as Nebuchadnezzar narrated it to Daniel. Let's read from verse 10 to 18. These were the visions in my head while I was in my bed. I seemed to see in the middle of the earth. As for him, the sentence is by decree of the watchman and by the saying of the saints. The resolution is so that the living may know that the Most High governs the kingdom of men and that he gives it to whomever he wishes and appoints the lowest of men over it. I, King Nebuchadnezzar, have seen this dream. You then, Belshazzar, will tell the interpretation of it, because all the wise men of my kingdom have not been able to show me its interpretation. But you can, because the spirit of the holy gods dwells in you, was not to be cut, but secured to the earth with a bond of iron and bronze. Then the dream changes, and the tree becomes a man to whom the heart of a beast is given and as such he behaves, living with the other beasts, getting wet with the dew of heaven, and eating grass from the earth. That state would last for a period of seven times, which probably indicates seven years. The purpose of everything that the dream foretold was so that the living may know that the Most High governs the kingdom of men and that he used certain people as channels to let us know his wonderful plan. Let's see Daniel's interpretation of Nebuchadnezzar's dream. Let's read verses 19 to 27. Then Daniel, whose name was Belteshazzar, was astonished for almost an hour, and his thoughts troubled him. The king spoke and said, Belteshazzar, do not be troubled by the dream or its interpretation. 
Belteshazzar answered and said, My lord, let the dream be for your enemies and its interpretation for those who love you badly. The tree that you saw, which grew with the grass of the field like oxen, and you will be bathed with the dew of heaven, and seven times will pass over you until you know that the Most High has dominion in the kingdom of men, and that he gives it to whomever he wills. As for the order to leave the stump of the roots of the same tree in the earth, it means that your kingdom will remain firm for you once you recognize that heaven rules. Therefore, O king, accept my advice. Redeem your sins with justice and your iniquities by respectful attitude. The prophet Daniel declared that he would have preferred the dream to refer to his enemies. My lord, let the dream be for your enemies and its interpretation for those who wish you harm. The situation Daniel found himself in was not easy. The message he had to communicate to the king from God implied that he was going to be degraded to the level of a beast. It required exceptional courage to give him a complete interpretation of the dream, but Daniel was a faithful prophet who was not afraid for his life. And we find a very similar case in the prophet Ezekiel when he uses the same metaphor of the tree to describe the pride of Assyria. We find this in Ezekiel 31, 3, 14. Also in that case, the fact of being exalted in height and having raised its summit among dense branches caused his heart to rise with his height. The prophet Isaiah perfectly captured the thoughts of the king of Babylon. Let's read Isaiah 14, 13 and 14. You who said in your heart, I will ascend to heaven, I will set up my throne on high, which a way that the vine of the tree is identified with a beast. And as Daniel explains, all this foreshadowed that Nebuchadnezzar would be removed from his position of authority in his kingdom and would be cast out of the palace to live as an animal among the beasts of the field until seven times had passed. At that time, the king would live like a madman. Doctors describe this mental illness as zoanthropy, which causes the person to react and behave like an animal. Although this is a divine judgment, it abandoned his kingdom. He is still the Most High and has all dominion in the kingdom of men. God was going to show Nebuchadnezzar that he was the one who ruled. The proof would be that his kingdom would be returned to him when he recognized that heaven rules, which is an expression for God, without using his name. This would undoubtedly be a miraculous fact, because in all kingdoms and in the world of politics, there are always rivals eager to rise. But for Nebuchadnezzar to understand that it was true, tea ord was still in the king's mouth when a voice came from heaven. It said to you, King Nebuchadnezzar, the kingdom has been taken from you, and they will drive you out from among men, and your habitation will be with the beasts of the field. They will feed you like oxen, and seven times will pass over you until you recognize that the Most High has dominion in the kingdom of men and gives it to whomever he wills. In the same hour, the word about Nebuchadnezzar was fulfilled, and he was driven out from among men. He ate grass like oxen, and his body was wet with the dew of heaven, until his hair grew like eagle feathers, and their nails like those of birds. His hair grew like eagle feathers, and his nails like those of birds. The other hand, the testimonies that have come down to us from ancient times confirm that the fame that Babylon had as one of the seven wonders of the ancient world was widely justified. The kings who preceded Nebuchadnezzar were only in charge of making conquests, but he, in addition to continuing in that same line, also stood out as the great builder of Babylon. According to ancient testimonies, the city was more than five square kilometers in size and was protected by an outer wall of a width that allowed four chariots abreast. After which, he would discover that everything was still the same. 
Although Dua during that time, they had not been able to count on him for anything. And secondly, since he reasoned and behaved like a beast, God was going to make him truly one in every way. So, in the same hour, the word was fulfilled about Nebuchadnezzar. And he was driven out from among men. He ate grass like oxen, and his body was wet with the dew of heaven until his hair grew like eagle feathers, and their nails like those of birds. Of his governmental activity between 582 and 575 BC, this silence is shocking, especially when we keep in mind how Middle Eastern leaders love to self-centered trumpet their achievements and hide their shame. Therefore, we can conclude that the judgment against King Nebuchadnezzar was real. He was given the opportunity to humiliate himself, and he didn't do it. Now, God humbled him, and the experience was much more severe than if Nebuchadnezzar had humbled himself. Perhaps because of his royal position are true and his ways just, and he can humble those who walk in pride. Dear listeners, Nebuchadnezzar could not be freed from his madness until God pointed out the end of time. Then he had the opportunity to humble himself and lift his eyes to heaven. After seven years, Nebuchadnezzar came to his senses and blessed the Most High. Somehow the king's mind still retained occasional moments of lucidity, and in one of them he lifted his eyes to heaven, which is a way of saying that he recognized the absolute sovereignty of God who would have taken advantage of the situation. 